Greek Orthodox Telecommunications presents Illuminations. Today's program, March 25th, Greek Independence Day. Greece, the southeastern part of the European continent, is easily remembered by someone who has seen its wild mountainous terrain or its golden coastline. It is described as a passageway of nations or as the birthplace of democracy. It is revered for the gifts it presented to mankind way back in the times of Pericles and the Golden Age of Athens. Epic poetry, art, drama, history, philosophy, mathematics, and the formulation of the principles of a democratic government. Since the end of the classical era, the Greek nations saw their military power falter. The citizens of Greece had to become accustomed to foreign rule. Greece, however, continued to shine its lights onto the rest of the world. Even her very conquerors, as in the case of the Roman Empire, once they were acquainted with Greek culture, they were in turn conquered by it. Foreign rulers changed through the years, but Greece never ceased to be the center of scientific, cultural, and religious quests and developments. It was in Greece where the teachings of Jesus Christ found a first foothold in Europe. The fusion of the Gospel's message with the reason and humanity of the Greeks eventually formed the basis of Christian religion as it is known today. And it was through Greece that Christianity spread to Europe, mainly because of the use of the Greek language that served as the international language of the time, as well as the association with the Byzantine Empire, which finally adopted Christianity as a state religion and subsequently strengthened its position. The Byzantine Empire started out as the eastern part of the Roman Empire, but slowly transformed to a state primarily based on the Greek mainland, ruled by emperors who used Greek as the official state language. During its lengthy 11th century life, the Byzantine state showed a particular interest in the preservation of ancient Greek culture. Champion of that cause was the Orthodox Church, who helped preserve the classical heritage through the centuries. Although the Byzantine Empire held within its borders many different nations, it was the land of Greece and its people that constituted its main body. And it was on that very land of Greece where Byzantium left its final breath. After fighting desperately for its life, it fell victim to the force of the expanding Ottoman Empire in 1453. The fall of Constantinople, the capital of once mighty Byzantium, brought to an end the history of a state that shone gloriously for 11 centuries. This ultimate defeat signaled for the Greek Orthodox Church and the Greek nation the start of a long period of subjugation to a ruthless Turkish rule. A, a Turk could come in and if he uh, liked your wife, he could carry her off. Uh, the best land was uh, owned by the Turks and the Greeks uh, were uh, given uh, 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 inferior land to farm. So you have to remember, people were uh, agrarian, the majority of the individuals at the time. And uh, in addition to that, P uh, uh, the Greeks had to wear a distinctive dress. Uh, they were really second-class citizens in their own country uh, and um, uh, lived at the mercy of um, whatever uh, overlord happened to be in the general vicinity. For the next four centuries, the Greeks attempted to regain their freedom several times, but every attempt failed for lack of organization and wider support. Every unsuccessful attempt, however, galvanized the spirit of the people and reaffirmed the intense feeling of nationhood that prevailed among Greeks of all classes. 
This feeling derived from their common language, from their common Christian faith, and from the consciousness of being under an alien and repressive rule. It also derived from the church, which initiated clandestine educational efforts that helped preserve the ancient heritage and the cultural and linguistic unity of the nation. The major contribution of the church in the main maintenance of the self-consciousness of the Greeks that they constituted the nation was that they, they provided the institutions and the leadership which are always necessary for the maintenance of group solidarity of any given group in society and they did so for some 400 years with considerable foresight with considerable practical sense when it came to everyday matters of dealing with Turkish authorities and with some vision as to the future. At the same time, the messages of the Enlightenment about equality and brotherhood among men that started arriving from Western Europe intoxicated the Greeks with a growing desire for national freedom. Rigas Ferreos, an 18th century Greek activist who was trying to raise awareness in Europe about the Greek cause, expressed the feelings of every enslaved Greek when he wrote his martial hymn. Kalitera mnyasoras elefteri zoi para saranda chronia sklavia kefilaki. Folk legend has it that the revolution started in the monastery of Agia Lavra in the northern part of the Peloponnesus Peninsula. According to the legend, the Metropolitan Bishop of Patras, Germanos, raised the flag of the revolution in front of the assembled primates and chieftains of the region and urged them to swear loyalty to the sacred fight for the freedom of their nation. The ultimate goal was set. Freedom or death. The date was the 25th of March, 1821. It was on that very same day that the Greek Orthodox Church honors the Annunciation of the Virgin Mary. Now March 25th, or the Annunciation of the Virgin Mary, from a biblical and theological point of view, is the occasion when Mary of Nazareth, the mother of Jesus, received the calling and the annunciation from God by way of one of the angels of God, the Archangel Gabriel, who announced to her, or presented her, if you will, with the choice to become the representative of all of humanity in the great economy of God's salvation by accepting to give birth to Jesus. In the Orthodox Christian conscience and understanding, this is one of the great and most significant feast days of the year because it, on the one hand, exalts the, the, the role and the person of Mary and at the same time establishes and clearly confirms from a theological point of view the humanity of Jesus. He was indeed conceived by, in, uh, by the Holy Spirit and, and with Mary and was brought to full term and was born for our salvation. Although military operations had started on the 21st of March, and historians point out that the assembly in the monastery took place a fortnight before, it is the 25th day of March which by tradition is celebrated as the beginning of the Greek Revolution. The reason why the Greeks celebrate 25th of March as the um, uh, day of Greek independence, the anniversary of, the Greek, of Greek independence, is because uh, it's the day, it's a religious holiday, the Annunciation of Virgin Mary, uh, uh, Evangelis Moses Theotoku, uh, when Mary was, uh, Virgin Mary was given the good news of, um, uh, going, of uh, bearing 